שלום. שלום. שלום, פאמילי. פטירה. הללויה. פרס סיסטר תקווה שלפט. אוקיי. She teach you good uh, dance, yeah? yeah? But uh, I was preaching in a lot and she come to the Lord. She is one of my baby also many years ago. Praise the Lord. Can we pray together? Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I humble myself before you and I ask you, Lord, soften your hearts today. Father, speak through my voice, Lord. Using me, Lord, your instrument. Lord. Father, I really need you. I really need your guidance and your direction, Lord. Special Father, I want to be the living testimony and blessing to our Kapatiran today, Lord. Father, Lord, cover us with your grace and your mercy, with your loving kindness today, Lord. And soften really our hearts, Lord. And open our hearts to receive what you want to give into us. In your precious holy name of Yeshua HaMashiach, of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah, family. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming me. Pastors, and I, I really appreciate very much for your kindness. And really, before we go to the Word, I want to share into you. Already 23 years ago, my life never be the same. You know, I'm born with very strategic, difficulty life mm -hmm. of family. Uh, my whole family passed through Holocaust, and from my mother and father's side. And I grew up with very painful stories like all the Jewish, this may be one of the thousands of testimonies, maybe I am one of the thousands of the testimonies of this. And I want a few minutes to take this, to share it to you my heart. Uh, my grandma sharing to me, she was evacuated from Poland, they was uh, from Polish background. They were evacuated to Germany, from Germany they was uh, uh, transferred them from Hamburg back to Auschwitz. Who knows this Auschwitz is the place where uh, that's uh, terrible. This was crematorium there where they burned the Jewish people. And to what I want to share it to you, you know, in that time, there was two weeks in train. No water, no food. Her sister was pregnant, maybe six to seven months. And who survived with drinking his own pee pee? My grandma holding my mom and her, and her brother, and by miraculous way they survived. Two weeks, no windows, no enough air. Some of them little bit cut the piece of the air become, but it was so cold, it's more to minus 20 Celsius in that time in Poland. And they opened the train and many bodies falling. Like you see in many movies, but it's the real story. And you know what? Her sister, the sister of my grandma started to kind of like shouting and uh, panic. One of the police of SS was beating her with rubber stick because everyone who need to go out from the train, another one shooting in the front of my grandma's eye. And she holding these two children, one of these children, my mom, and she holding this white material like this to not shout because everyone who shout was shoot. And you know what? To growing with these stories, you think it's easy to receive Jesus Christ? This easy to change the Jewish people? No. But through your love, through your encouragement, through your loyalty, through your prayer, through your, you know, obedience. Sometimes your employer is very harsh. Sometimes he's so strong and he's not respectful, you know what? But you pray for them. And you're interceding for them. Amen? Amen? And I encourage you all of you, be prayer warriors in this land. You're not by accident in Israel. you everyone by special calling in this nation. But special, I talk to Je Jesus is the Lord to Jer Jerusalem branch. Because Yerushalayim is meaning Yerusha is inheritance. As the God's inheritance or Yerushalayim complete inheritance or double inheritance. Because Shalayim is also like you say Yad, hand, Yadayim, feet, Regel, Raglayim. It means Yerushalayim. It's a double Jerusalem. Amen? I don't know how you, but I'm looking for the new Jerusalem. I do everything. I pray in the past. I want to go to the new Jerusalem. But Yerushalayim 
as inheritance of God. There's a city of completeness and of peace. But this city passed through 900 wars. No one city in the world passed through 900 wars. Destroy and rebuild. Destroy and rebuild. You know what? This city not have rivers. This not have beauty. Like in Switzerland or in Holland in some places. Or in some places in Philippines. And special in, I remember, in a beautiful place and I visited in Mindanao, in Kamigin Island. As it was a complete, complete was burned from volcanoes, but also now it's springs, it's beautiful. Of course, it's a long journey to us to go there. But Jerusalem is not beautiful. I talk to you in physical realm. Stones, not so much flowers, not so much trees. Trees, what you see, is coming from the brothers and sisters, Christians around the world. But in, in the end, Jerusalem and the city of completeness. And we all of us are part of this city. Amen. Still, Amen. we have physical city, Jerusalem. That's why undivided city. We not be divided city. We not separate the city. But I talk about Jesus is the Lord, the Jerusalem branch. You have the special task to carry in the city. It's not easy to do something in Jerusalem. As a strategic, we mess, most of the time, every time you pray, you feel attacks, you feel problems, you feel difficulties, much more from Tel Aviv, much more from Haifa, much more of course from Beersheba and other cities. Jerusalem is a strategic city and need a lot of prayer, a lot of intercession. You know, they have a lot of stories what I passed through in my family. But you know what? One day, God touched me. Through one brother from Holland. And he preached the gospel in, in the hospital. And I was in that time visit the one place, uh, the small community. You know, yeah, hallelujah. Father, bless the children, hallelujah. They blessing, hallelujah. They not rejection. They love and blessing, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, amen. Amen. Kapatira, remember in Hebrew, Amen, it means El Melech Neiman, God, King, Faithful. Say again, El Melech Neiman, God, King, Faithful. Hallelujah. And we say Amen, we not say regularly, that's a strategic word, Amen. God, King, Faithful. And we proclaim it. And we say Hallelujah. Hallel is mean worship. He a God. We worship Him. Amen. It's mean not only in our words, but worship. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I, you know, in the end, this brother from Holland was sharing to me the word about Jesus Christ. But for us, for the Jewish people, you know, Jesus is okay, but Son of God is impossible. It's, Son of God is scary for us. Because we Jewish people not believe in Son of God. We believe in God Creator, but not Son of God. And, it, and you know what? And I decided to come to this small congregation. This was in the street of Bethlehem, 48. Small community called the Brit Yerushalayim, the Covenant of Jerusalem. It's only hardly 30 people, all of them Jewish. And no one knew me. And I was so excited. And I was amazed because I was fashion model. Represent a Dolce Gabbana company. I am not walking Tel Aviv in the streets. All the boards of this Hill Center is one of the boards of the of my picture there. Yeah. Seriously, this is 23 years ago, and you know what? And it's good money, or for 14,000 shekels per month, and I have a good future. And I not walk in the streets regularly. I put a hat and some glasses and all this thing, you know, but. At the time of very early in the morning, I, drive, I take the first bus to Jerusalem to visit this again, this congregation. And we come to Judean Hills. And you come to Jerusalem, you see this beautiful, special early in the morning, yeah? And I see the hand. I say, maybe I'm overworking. Because in you, in fashion, sometimes five to six hours, one picture. You know what I mean? You may have that. 1,000 pictures, but only one picture they need for specific journal or advertisement. And you know what? With projectors, you burn. And I say, maybe I'm overtired. And I see this hand, and I hear the voice. Chaim or Muffet, life or death. 
I was so afraid. I was so afraid. You know, and I, here again, everything what I create by sand and water, life or death. And I came very early to this congregation and I waited this pastor coming, Pastor Shmuel, Suran, and I say to him, you know, I hear this and this and I see, he say, Daniel, that God is calling you in extraordinary way. You must repent. And I say, and I say, repent for what? I'm not smoke, I'm not womanized, I'm a good person from very good family. I'm what to repent, you know? But he put his hand upon my shoulder and he say like this, God break him, Elohim tishboroto. In Hebrew, Tishbor, break him. It's a very hard word, very harsh word. But I don't like this kind of prayer. And inside of me feel, why you pray for me like this, you know? And, I, and he said, Lord, break him, break him, melting him. And I bow down, and I bow down, and I start to cry. And I start to cry. And I not understand what's going on. And I start to speak, and the spirit come out. And I say, Lord, forgive me from selfishness, from stubbornness, from unforgiveness, and for all. Today, this is the message. Papatira, you ready? Hallelujah. <laughs> but you know what? God healed my heart. After a couple weeks, I decided to baptize. And this brother from Holland, he decided to baptize with me. He's, he was a long time believer, but because he's from the very Protestant uh, Reformed Church, and uh, this was cold weather. They only sprinkled a little bit water in his head. This is baptism, you know. But he decided to go. But I decided to not go to Jordan River. I want to baptize in Anne Karen, where John Baptist born. Who knows this place? It's very special. Before it belonged to Greek Orthodox, now to the Franciscan Catholics. Anyway, they're still fighting against each other. To whom belong the holy place? <laughs> holy Sepulchre, the same. Five organizations fighting. To whom belong this, you know? Praise God that Jesus is not there. He is the reason. Amen? And we not bow down to the places, but we believe in the living God. Amen? Amen. He is our Savior and our Redeemer. And I was, it was cold, freezing water. And I go down in the water, and a day, two of them baptized me three times. I said, why three times? Because I'm from the rabbi family. I'm from the from a mother and father's side, the rabbis, the, all of them also died in the Holocaust. And you know, they was baptized me three times, and I feel like fire come upon me. Fire come upon my body. And I burn inside of, my, inside of me. And I understand that God is calling me. And I say two words, Lord, I dedicate my life to you, and I dedicate my life to others. It's now 23 years to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. And I want to say to, to all of you, we are 20 Messianic believers, Jewish believers in this land. You know, uh, only in our association, we have in general three big organizations in, in Israel. One of these three, we are the number three. And we call the crystal forum, we call it like crystal shining. We want to be shine to God. Amen? We want to be crystal beautiful. And in the beginning, I don't like this name. I said, I don't want this name. This is like New Age. You know, the one pastor, see the vision. And here, one big church, in King of Glory Church in Haifa. And he said, I see the vision, the crystal. And after we pray together, six pastors pray, and, and God give us the word. We become crystal. <laughs> Hallelujah. Maybe the people don't like it. Not right now, 30 churches, Messianic believers, Jewish congregations together. And I say to you, it's amazing what God is doing because through unity, we see His glory. Amen? Amen. I was uh, uh, thinking of the word and uh, uh, number 10 because it's beautiful, number 10. You know? I said, 10 is a jubilee for us. Of course, but something maybe more. And I put for myself, I was praying for all this week for, I don't want to be here for show in this community. I want to be the blessing. I want to be the living encouragement to every one of you. Amen? Amen. Because I'm local from Jerusalem, and you, you know what? And I want to be the blessing to Arkapatira because my wife also from Cebu, she's also 28 years here, a long time ago. In, in a nurse in the Sharon Sedek for so many years. And you know what? 
And I want to say to you, God give me the best of the best. Lovely, patient, gentle, humble, prayerful warrior. Hallelujah. Maybe without our prayers, I don't know where I'd be. You know, but I say to you that also God put the burden in my heart to be the intercessor for the Philippines. And I pray for Philippines. And I, I cry for our Kapatir and hear 70,000 Filipina in Israel. You know this? Maybe more now. Officially, 70,000. And we see divorce problems children born without fathers and all this in my heart is broken that's why we have intercession ministry we pray for you we pray for our community we pray for we still have huge harvest to do in our tahana in tel aviv in our in our every tahana or in every park yeah we still have a special task to bring more souls to jesus amen and you be the real uh, represent adonai elohim Hallelujah, Jesus Christ. You be represent Him every place where you go. Don't forget, the, uh, the brother A.D. Villanueva have the special calling to save the world. Amen? And you must to be go forward to be the light and to be the blessing and to be the living testimony. Every place where you go, every corner of, around the world. Amen? And uh, we not uh, need to be have in competing between each other. No, no, no. We must to be united to Amen. Amen. And before we go into the world, I know we open in, in John. And I see here, we already read in John, but this is in John chapter 17. And Jesus pray here, very strong. John chapter 17, 20. He said, I do not pray for this alone, but also for those who will believe in me through the word. 21. That they all may be one as you, Father are in me and I in you that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me and here and it's very important 22 and the glory which you give me I have given them that they may be one just as us we are one 23 I in them and you in me that they may be perfect in one that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Amen. He transferred his glory to us. Amen. He's a power. He's anointing to us, you know. And before we go in, I, I put for number 10. Hallelujah. And number 10, I see here, is very precious, you know. Uh, also, remember, Habakkuk. Habakkuk from Hebrew, Hibuk. From the word Hibuk, embrace. Amen. And we say Hibuk or Lechabek as mean embracing. Yeah? This today, you, you decide it's a very beautiful verse, you know. And also Habakkuk is mean God is want to embrace you this year. 2013 in the way, I want to see how you start in this year. With a new journey, with new calling, with new understanding of God. Amen. With new power of you. To serve Him more, to be the loyal, to be faithful, to be obedient in small things before you go to the big and mighty things. Amen? I, re I remember I was fixing the chairs and I helping to everything, to, you know, to building church. And the people put bubble gums in the, in the chair. And I, say, and I, I go after the church. I say, what are they doing like this? You see, they call themselves believers. That's not right, you know. But after two years, God said to me, I want to see your humility. Clean the toilets, fixing the chairs, and you know what? God see my heart and start to using me mightily. And he used me to save the soul to Jewish people because Jewish people they're more open to the Jewish people. You understand? And we speak the Hebrew, we speak the same dialect, the same language, they more open to each other. But they also be open to some of you. You are the best for your employer. Some of the employers say you are everything for me. You know what you say? And you slowly preach the gospel. You pray for them. You interceding for them. Amen? If you employer not good, I give to some of them anointing oil. And I say, anoint his shoes. Anoint his, anoint his pillow. Anoint his dress. Anoint everything. You know what? Starting something change. Because we believe in prayer. Amen? Remember, I receive and I start to think, thinking about 10. I'll talk about 10, 10% of giving to God. 
I say about Ten Commandments. Yeah? And I see here in, Gen in Exodus chapter 20 from 3 to 17. Will not be open. Yeah? And I see here there's also number of perfection. Ten is perfection. In Hebrew, in general, I'm not believing numerology. Please understand me. I'm careful of numerology. I'm careful with Kabbalah and all this mysticism of Zohar. You know, please understand me. Yeah. But I see here as also number three is also the perfection. Number seven is the completeness and fullness of perfection. Yeah. And number ten is the perfection. And number twelve, because of the twelve tribes, yeah? Hallelujah. 12 disciples. It's also very special. We go. 10 righteous. We go here in Genesis chapter 18, 32. And here we see here, before we go to the word, from the scripture point of view, the note of the Lord was prepared to spare the judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah. If by the right, but then righteous people were born and be saved and be used. And here we see, and he, Abraham said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but these ones. For there were ten shall be found there. And I see here, ten, ten righteous. They're always in some city, there are some people who are really righteous to God. And here I see again, let go continue. Ten verses. We see here in Genesis chapter 1, 10, God is creating the world. What is the day of creation? First day, second day. And here I put for myself, listen, this is amazing revelation. The 10th verse of the Bible is part of the third day of creation. We have already known that 10 is like the first and perfection number. Yeah? And what we see here in Genesis chapter 1, 10, And God called the dry land air and gathered together of the water called the his seas and God saw that it was good. What I see here, and I read in Genesis chapter 1 to 10, I see God is creating. And, and you know, ten, in seven days he's resting, but it's kind of 10 days of creation of the world. Yeah? Continue go. And I see 10 chapters. Yeah? With 10 chapters. Continue. And I see 10 chapters. I put here to, to myself 10 chapters of the Bible, a largely and general genealogy of descendants of Noah. And you know, Noah is represent comfortable. Is Noah in Hebrew comfort. Yeah? Nochichut or Noah, the same meaning. Yeah? And here as I put for myself, what is the 10 people yeah? in the time of Noah? And I see here Adam, man, second, Seth. Appointed three Anos mortal four Kain sorrow five Mahalelel in Hebrew in Hebrew is different meaning Mahalelel the blessed God six Jared and shall come down seven Enoch and here teaching and eight Methuselah, his dead shall bring nine, Lamech, the sorrowful, and ten is Noah, comfort. And I see here, you know, ten is so much meaning in the Bible, yeah? You enter to the new season, to the new anointing, the new perfection. You know what? What you pass through, you pass through. You pass through some difficulties and troubles, and maybe in leadership. Maybe in some, you know, always in the church, there are only one, always one person who won't the church be destroyed. It's always like this, because of jealousy and gossip. You know what? We see as amazing word, our knowledge be covered. You know, and His glory, His power, His anointing. But before it's going, we need to deal with ourselves. Yeah? And here, Put for myself seven roots of bitterness. Listen, all the seven I carry before in my heart. You know? And now go to check our hearts before we go to the message. Yeah? First is the pride. And generally is the message today for the pride. Very harsh word. Prideful. Gava from the word gavoa. Higher. And I call this as Proverbs chapter 22, 4. 
Second, egoism, selfishness. You know, some people, this is spirit in the church. You understand what I talk? There's always feelings, people gossiping and jealousy against each other. Somebody who is in a position, well, always somebody want to somebody be destroyed. And I have the strong revelation for this message of pride, of gava, from the word gavoa, higher. Yeah? Egoism, selfishness, all the ism. Hinduism, Buddhism, Confucianism, and Judaism too. All the ism. But also, I not talk about the ism, this other topic. I talk about your selfishness. Yeah? And I put here also how you need, need to respect our mothers and fathers. How we need to respect each other and not be selfish and thinking only for ourselves. That's why I put Matthew chapter 19, 19. You know this word very well. Three, stubbornness. Stubbornness. People stubborn, don't teach me who you are. You know what? And I talk to some Kapatira, say, I'm Francis, I'm, I'm born Catholic, I be Catholic, don't change me. I say, Kapati, sister, you not be, you know, listen, you need to know the truth. Listen first before, you know, don't change me. I'm dying, I want to, I'm born uh, 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 Catholic, I want to die Catholic, I like my family, all this thing, you know. And I, I, and I start to talk to her about the word of God, start to tears coming. She start to cry so much, you know, and all this but stubbornness sometimes inside, inside of us, and I see the spirit of stubbornness in one of the sons of King David, Absalom. You know, he took good in, in uh, uh, like uh, protecting his sister, Tamar. Tamar is meaning dates, sweetness, juicy, you know. But after we're not here, nothing from Tamar, what has happened? But we know where is the area of Tamar is near to Sodom and Gomorrah. Exactly down in that sea. But she ran with shame there. And you know the brother uh, of, of uh, uh, Absalom, you remember Av, Salom, this means is the, the father's peace. And he is the best to the King David because he's so handsome. He's so good looking. He was so dressing up represented, you know, and people respect him. But the spirit come. The same spirit was come to the king Saul against King David. And you see, he was ordained to humility to be the king and lose everything because of pride. Everything he lost complete until then. And King David, he did a lot of mistakes, but because he loved God. He always repent. He always come to God. You know, but you know, this is the season we be repent. And everything what we done, we're not perfect before eyes of God. We still need to really check our hearts. Continue. You know, stubbornness, I put Nehemiah chapter 9, 16. 4. Unforgiveness. You know, Colossians chapter 1, 14. Spirit of unforgiveness. You know what? I always remember bad things in my mind. You know, always bad things in my mind. But I'm not remember good things who do something to me. Some people do very bad to me. But I remember this. But some of them, they do so good to me. They were so good and I forget very good. And the same we are believers in Jesus Christ. We are sometimes remember the bad things inside. Who you see, and this sister did to me, and I show it to her. You know what? There's a spirit of unforgiveness. We be never see God. We be only flow by our emotions and our feelings. You know, we want to see His glory. We want to see His power. We want to see His mighty anointing. We must repent before God. Amen. This ten year as an entrance to the new season as a new calling of God, as a new anointing, prophetic, what God is giving to Jesus is the Lord. Amen? Special to the Jerusalem branch, as a new task, what you call it, for God. Amen? And here I see five, disobedience, the spirit of disobedience, the spirit of, uh, you know, they say to you what you do, you do not do. You know what? Sometimes you always find something to not do what leaders ask you. You must be loyal, faithful, and obedient. 
No matter what situation, no matter price what you need. You know what? Remind me always story. And, and uh, people say about Adam and Eve. You know, Jewish people, they like to discuss about the Adam and Eve. You know what? I don't know how you, but I'm not part of Adam. I'm part of Yeshua. Amen. He's my Messiah. I'm not one of part of Adam. Praise, him. He's the, he's the, praise God for him, to God create him, and after through him is Hava. We say Eve, Eve yeah? But you know what happened? And God said, who is ashamed? And you know, immediately Adam said, I don't know, uh, Eve, she gave it to me. Yeah, she gave it to me, the, the apple to eat. And you know what happened? The Satan say, I don't know how long she take. And now we start to thinking, who is ashamed? Adam say, I not, I not do nothing. I ever give, and I eat on me. I ever say, no, I'm not ashamed. She, he give it to me, Satan, Lucifer. You know, and this conversation coming between three of them. And I say the same like this. Who is ashamed? Who is ashamed? It's that we're always dealing with each other. Who is ashamed? Come to repent before God and I'm looking who's be ashamed. You know what? We're not waiting for the Yom Kippur day. I don't know how you, we are 23,000 believers not waiting for this Yom Kippur. Only in one day to repent. Praise God. We have Yeshua, our Messiah, our Jesus Christ. I come every morning to repent before me. Amen. And I did something. Lord, I humbled myself and I saw forgive me. Forgive me, Abba. Forgive me, Yeshua. Forgive me when I did something, I speak something against the brother and sister. And jealousy. The sixth root is jealousy. You know, we, we remember this in the Bible, like so much about the jealousy. So much. It's not only good things, but jealousy between each other. It's God mercy and it's become no jealousy in Jesus the Lord. Amen? In all our body of Christ here in this land and around the world. And Seven is fornication. I remember one church and I enter and I pray. And this pastor asked me to, I was in, in, I don't want to say the name of the church and I'm in Manila. It's a big church. And uh, they asked me to pray for the, for the worshipers. And I pray for one sister and Lord say to me, fornication. I need to pray for, she, for repentance. And you know what? And I only open my word because I write the book. I, the book is printed in three languages. They call the Call to Holiness, and I teach and do seminars. Freedom of the spirit of masturbation in the church. Very hard topic, but you know what? And I, every time, when I talk with the worshippers, from 300 worshippers, because it's a big mega church, only eight coming in the front. You understand? We're not perfect. We're still dealing with ourselves. We're fighting day by day in our body. Holy temple. Watching things. Looking in pornography. Looking at other things. And God gave a strong message in this book about homosexuality, lesbianity, bisexuality, transsexuality. How to really bring healing. Not to speak in against it, but how to teach to receive the healing. Because no one born it like this. Remember, God created us by His own that's it. And you not say I have bigger nose or smaller nose and I look ugly and you look uh, taller and nice. We everyone created by God. Beautiful, precious, lovely. Amen. And one have more people and one not have and one others. No matter what. God created you by His own image. And start to see yourself in the mirror. You are precious. You're not rejected anymore because your husband something dead for you or some people in the family. Oh, Lord, Father, I pray right now for this child, Lord. I ask you, Father, Lord, soften his heart, Lord. Father, Lord, soften his Father, in the precious holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Here we go. In, I still have a few minutes. Please open your hearts and receive what the Lord say to you today. Amen. And Amos chapter 2.14. The mighty man cannot deliver himself. And I'm thinking of this verse. What is this? You know, because you want to give us the knowledge and your glory. And you want to show it through us, through believers, the mighty power of your anointing. But we still in some task of troubles and problems and confusion in our life. And the Lord said this to me, pride is strategic tool of war 
used by devil Lucifer, Satan, to dismantle God's grace in your life. Are you with me, Kapatira? Amen. And you say, Amen. Is God King faithful? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He's the faithful God. Hallelujah. Amen. Pride generally here comes and attack you in the area of your power. Where you're strong. When you are strong in the area, this is where and when enemy of pride attacks. They're looking every time to your strong. It's talking you in your knowledge or strong in you something you have it because we have something. You know, please understand me in right. I'm not English. You know, I'm more Hebrew. This is my language, you know. But praise God, I'm, I'm also English preacher because when I go around the world and I have translator, praise God, in China, Shanghai, God do miracles there. You know, in China, 100 million believers. 2% of China. I say, they only come to Israel. There's been no place where to stand, not sit. <laughs> you know, 100 million believers. They're not yet ready. They prepared and equipped to send missionaries soon. So, slowly, slowly, got transferred wealth to China, and second country, India, in the way, and third country, Africa. He said, oh, Africa is poor, India is also, no, 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 you see. Everybody talk, 15 years ago for China, the same, $20 salary. Now, they have minimum $2,000 salary. In Shanghai, maybe $5,000 salary. That's a serious what's going on. The Taiwanese people, they will say, oh, the China, will... now they go to, to work to China. And Hong Kongese now. And, and Singaporean the same. It's amazing what God does. Because people cry fasting prayer in interceding for China. And I believe this one day God will shake something, switch something for Philippines. Amen? Amen. And the wealth be returned back to Philippines. Amen. And remove the whole thing. Like everybody said, we are a corrupt country. Enough to speak corrupt. Amen. You are the country of blessing. You know what? The Philippines may be one of the beautiful countries. And not only this, one of the... And you see Filipinos everywhere around the world. And they're so gifted. And they do job the best, more from any other people. You are precious. You are special. You are unique. Not because of my wife from Philippines. Because I many times visit Philippines. Many times visit. And also visit in Australia or Philippines. In Germany, every place that I go, I look in our church in, in, in Cyprus, and I also, there's a more from 11,000 Filipinos in 800,000 people country. And I always speak, love your country, pray for your nation, intercede for your nation, cry for your nation. God want to do, He want to return back His inheritance. Back inheritance was stolen from this country, inheritance be back. But we still remove the spirit of pride, selfishness, and egoism from this nation. Because where the spirit come? Come from Spaniel. From spirit of Spanish people. You know, spirit of Spaniard, this is spirit of pride. We have the same Jewish people come from Spain. They are very strong. Don't change them. You know, continue with going here. And you know, here I see they have two ways of attack. Attack when they less expect in attack. Second, when everything is going well and strong. The devil is coming. He's looking every place in your soul, in your heart, where to attack. Where to come and do something. You know? And it continue. And here I see pride will ever cause God's grace to be rejected in your life once it has been activated. And you activate pride. The grace of God in His glory, we remove glory in Hebrew, kavod. From the word kavod is also respect. The same meaning in Hebrew. Glory is meaning as a glory is also powerful and also respectful. And here we see in James chapter 5, 4, 5. James chapter 4. Five and six. Or do you think that the scriptures say in vain, the spirit will dwell in your jealousy? Six. But he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but give grace to the humble. 
You know me what? Kapatia, you pastors is the humble servants of God. Precious. They give the best. They give invest the time in all your leaders and all your servants of God. Give the best to God. You want to see his glory? You want to serve the Lord. Do something. You know, kick out the devil. Remove everything with the selfish desires of your mind. And here I say, who is on the enemy who will not run from the glory? Who is on the enemy who can operate in the glory? It is one spirit that will conquer you if you are not equipped it is pride. Pride is the gateway, a road to all wickedness. Pride is the mother of all sin. It was the first sin. Pride is only sin that can attack in perfection. Heaven is the perfect. You know what? Where's the perfect? You remember Lucifer, devil. He's going against God. What he did? He is the worshiper. Worship is so beautiful. And we worship. You know what? I don't know how you, Kapatira, I like to worship God. I want to be in His presence. I'm hungry for His presence. And I, I worship God. I say, Lord, I want to feel you. I want to touch you. I want to be in your presence. I remember my daughter was young. I, I talk to her every time. And you dance to the Lord. Never look to people. Look to God and look to your hands. You know, and you dance to God. Don't look because you lose the concentration. I always teach you to be in the presence of God. Always be in the presence of God. Don't lose His anointing. You're chosen by God. You're calling by the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know, God say here, this is the final hour, the church, God is not coming back from the gifted church. He's not come to the gifted church of my church, Livingstone, or your church. It's praise God, your church is big. I, I visit in Hong Kong. Whoa. Maybe one of the biggest, the Hong Kongese people know that so big church like Jesus is the Lord have in Hong Kong. Maybe one of the biggest Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The anointing is so strong there. Wow. And here I see, you know, He's not coming for the glorious church. Bless, special church, you know, with a gifted church. But He's not even coming back from the anointed church. Powerful when you see the people was in the floor and full of anointing. He's not coming for this kind of church. He's only coming back to glorious church that is the glorious church. It is the church that is saturated by the operating in the glory of God. We talk about the glory. I don't talk about the knowledge. I don't talk about the wisdom. Praise God. God give us more and more wisdom. I talk about the glory today. Glorious church. The 10th anniversary is the glorious church. It's a really see power of, of God much more stronger. It's, it's for the reason that pride must be eradicated out of the lives of God's people. God in this final hour will use man and woman in the glory, which is He Himself. He's coming with His glory to His mighty visitation, coming to visit you in, in the time to you never dream. You're never ready in His coming. He wants to see, are you stand in my purpose or not? Are you ready for my glory or not? You know, so many movements in this world. Grace movements, everything by grace, everything by grace. <laughs> Excuse me, and you sin, and by grace you are healed. No, 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 no. I don't believe in this kind of things. I'm not against preacher's talk in Singapore or others. I not talk about the, the, the movement of prosperity. Everything, prosperity, prosperity, you know Jesus there. You talk to me? You understand what I talk to you? There are movements in this world. <coughs> movements of fasting. You need, everything is coming, you fasting. Praise God, we will fast, amen. You need to believe. You need to open to His You know, you need to open to His anointing. And you know, and I pray, God say to me, don't pray regular prayer. And you pray, pray loud with tears. You understand? Before I pray like this, oh Lord, hallelujah. You know what? This is not the prayer. 
And you pray, you pray loud, strong, with tears. Remove the sin. Remove the selfish desire from your heart. Amen? Kapatiran, you pray next time, go to some park, go to some toilet. Because I know some kapatiran, they put face in, in, in the pillow. So the employer be not hearing. And they cry and weeping to God. Praise the Lord for this. Hallelujah. Movements in this world. Be not part of movements. Amen? We're not part of this movement. It's coming and going. I remember they have movements of, uh, of River, of Toronto, coming and going. Now everything disappeared. It's temporary. But we want to see His glory. We want to see His power. We want to see His anointing. Not by movements. And not by prosperity. Praise God, we want to be prosperous for God. Amen? But not everything by prosperity. It's Jesus is there. And there is nothing, and where is no Yeshua, is nothing. We need to be looking for Him, searching for Him, touching Him. And here I, I put for myself here. In, in Proverbs, come to open in Proverbs, chapter 13, 10. By pride comes nothing but strife. You know what the pride comes? All of the seven bitter roots come immediately. It is the root of all problems in the world. Friend I have before, suddenly, I received the position, you know, and I studied eight years for a doctor of divinity in the United States, and the other brother not received this certificate. He was stopped to speak to me. He's jealous. I don't understand why. We believers in Jesus Christ. Not be like this. I'm just sorry you're not receiving. I receive. I will give you mine. I don't need all this position. And, and, and the Patina, I don't need this position. If you don't call me pastor, call me brother, call me brother. You know what? Don't call me. I don't need these names. God, I want to see He see me. Amen. In everything. <laughs> all the names and positions. But they have for everything have kavod. Amen? Kavod is God. Respect. Amen? And you respect, especially who is in position. But pride come, strife come, problems come, selfishness come. We enter to the new season. Ten years is the passing through. Special is in, in 2013. Some people say, I don't like number 13. Is the evil. No, we don't believe this kind of thing. Don't believe this thing. And I say, sometimes I don't like number six. And I say six, I don't like this number six also. You know, six, this is devil number. But I say, oh Lord, in, in blood, blood of Jesus Christ, I don't receive this kind of influence, you know. I am changed from six to seven. That's it. You know, hallelujah. You know, and, uh, praise God. That don't be so naive and so too much oversensitive or over emotional. For numbers. Jewish people, they believe so much numbers. <gasps> Yeshua meaning this and this, and this meaning this, and this meaning this, and this. You know what Jewish people are so special? They sitting in Shabbat, I visit many times, and they reading uh, the Psalm 36, for, from 1 to 2, 8 hours. No, 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 but this meaning this. And they discussing, and they say, Oh Lord, you, have, you love them so much. This is unusual nation. They talk about the God, about the Word of God, hours. You will not have patience, patience for 20 minutes. You will discuss quick, home group, you know, that's it. But not eight hours for the one. This is special, unusual nation. Call it by the chosen nation. Amen. But we also chosen generation. Amen. Amen. Because we know Yeshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Continue going. I hope I have still... Five minutes, yeah? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I put I goes small. Because I, I put this very strong word. In he, I see here, very strong word. Yeshua, our Messiah, Jesus Christ, was not afraid of having no reputation. He made himself that way as we see in Philippians. Chapter 2, 7. Complete down. Complete humbleness. Until they go to the cross. You know, if Yeshua, Jesus, could go all the way down in hell and come back out, then you can go lower enough. If you go to lowest place, you could ever go 
God comes and find you and bring you high. Amen? But Satan, Lucifer, situation, are we always looking where you grow with your emotions and you lose his anointing. And that's why I'm so painful for me, you know, where the people sometimes, they lost the calling of God. And God is calling you. God is calling you to be the servant, to be the messengers, to be the evangelist, to be a worshiper, you know. They have so many positions in the house of the Lord, you know. Don't jealous against each other. And you have something to speak against, brother or sister, you must repent before you enter to 2013, to the new season of this year. Yeshua Messiah is only coming back to get what looked like Him. A glorious anointed church. He wants to see His reflection and image in you. The glory of God is the actual manifest presence of God. And you know, in His presence, the glory comes. His anointing comes. His power come upon us. Amen? And I remember when we worship, I see some people here and cry. Some, uh, you know, God starts to, you know what God doing? He breaking the heart. He starts to break in us. He breaks our selfishness. He breaks our uh, stubbornness. Our, our flesh desires. You know, fleshly thoughts. I always say to one sister, don't dress like this sister. Don't dress like this. And one Chinese man abused her. Sexual. You know what? In my heart desire, I have always carried the ministry of abuse. Abuse have three ways of abuse. Verbal, sexual, and physical. And you know what? And I start to searching everyone. Everyone passed through. Maybe not sexual, but physical. And not the physical, verbal. Everyone in this world. How we need to be careful. And I, I, my heart is crying for, I see single mothers who was passing through abuse so much. And I said, Lord, heal. Heal them. You remember I say to Jesus Christ, I will not live for myself. I live for you and for others. I hope you today decide for yourself to live for others. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And here I, I want to finish here. You know, you have people who have been in your church a long time. I know this. Some of you, they have a long time. Some years. And they are still jealous and competing with one another. And they still can't get along with one another. I speak through family. We are the family of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Yeah. There is no separation between me, Jewish, and between you, nations. I don't call the name, say the name Gentile, because it's very harsh word. Amin is better, nations. Hallelujah. God break the wall of separation between me and you. And we are one new man in Christ. Amen? There's no any more separation. This is the same city that belongs to us, and the same city of Jerusalem has belonged to you. This is your city, because you are part of this inheritance. Because you know who is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And here, I see, but they still don't know how to deal with each other. And they don't know, they don't come to get the God's presence. And that's why they are not being changed. The church is supposed to be a place where God's glory stays. Resides. This is why the world don't respect the church now. The people say, oh church, no, no, I don't want to go. You know this, you have experience. And you talk to you or you people, Filipino or some other, oh church, I don't want to go to church. What kind of church? What church is this? You know? But and I go to the church, Palinki, sailing, Tumbo is in backlash, laughing, selling uh, phone cards. Selling the uh, Apalaya. I seriously saw it. Go to here. Redeemed Church uh, in uh, Notre Dame de Zion. I talked to you here in uh, Catholic Franciscan in, in, uh, in Jerusalem. 
in the, near the old city. You'd be shocked there. Balinki there. God mercy, Lord. And now how do, you know, you think the God is respect this? And you remember when Jesus come to the temple, he throw the whole the tables. Because this is the place where he learned. You remember with G, uh, Mary uh, and, and Joseph looking, where is the Jesus? And they find him, he's sitting near to rabbis and listen to the word of God. Where? Exactly in the same place where they believed. He is coming, he's so angry, he throw everything. Because this holy place where he lived, listened before the word of God. There's been no palinki in the church. You're not borrow, you're not giving to other people. Be careful to dealing with the money. I know one sister gives $2,000 and others say, oh, you not give me. She said, Pastor, she, I give her. I say, I don't want to deal, repent both of you. You know, I don't want to deal with these kind of problems. In our church, we don't want to give. You know, and you give, please, with loyalty. And that's now because they see people working the gifts of God, but their lives are still a mess and they have bad attitude. Bad attitude. Christian attitude? Believer's attitude? All the attitude of the world. Some of them they believe so many years and they see the same and the same. I don't want to be like this. I don't want to be like this. I don't want to watching and looking for the other bad movies and all kind of this thing. I'm separate from this world. I'm servant of God. The people thinking, ah, me, you, I'm not interested so much. I'd be not interested for them, but I'm very interested to God. I know what God showing to me. I know what I do for God. And I see His glory every time. Every time. And I see here, and we the finish. They see people be anointed, but they don't look like Yeshua Jesus. The world wants Jesus. This world wants Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, then I will draw all men unto me. Don't tell me that all men can come. Don't tell me that all men can be drawn. They are drawn because all the sea is the gift and your flesh. You know what I see here? We're looking to be like Jesus. But we are bad attitude. Our characters not change. We not change. Look, I, I remember, and I sitting with Brother Eddie Villanueva, and I sitting, and he sharing his testimony, and he sharing that sometimes he don't have gods in his house, and God give him live very simple life with his wife. You know what? But he knows he dedicate himself to Jesus Christ. He hundred percent say, I belong to you, God, and I believe you give me, you bless me. And you provide for me. God give him gas. And God still provide for a few weeks. How is this possible? God do it. Miracles. Miracles. I hear this also testimony. People finish gasoline in the car. And they pray, pray, pray. They still driving for 300 kilometers. Yes. By miracles. By air. By Holy Spirit. You know. Oh, Lord. Mercy. Every church is supposed to grow up and the full statue and the measure of faith in Jesus Christ. They are supposed to grow into things of God until they become mature, powerful, glorious, anointed church in Jesus Christ. Amen. Come to church. We start to pray together for one minute. And we say, Lord, heal something in something in my heart. Heal and deliver. Amen. We enter to 10. Now is it. You know what? To 2013, to the new season. What you decide, that's what you receive. You know what? Every time I say, this decision not come from God, and not come from people, but come from you. You decide today, to your family be transformed, your husband be changed, you, and you speak this word with the boldness, you will see his miracles. You will see the power of the manifestation, everything God say, I do miraculous way. Believe in me, says the Lord. Believe in me. You will see my glory. You will see my power. And this what and you know what? And something be changed here, the whole world will change. With his knowledge and his glorious. Because we are. God is calling us to be the glorious church. For one minute. We close our eyes. And we say, Lord, Abba. Mishtahavim lefanecha Adonai. We humble ourselves before you. And we ask you, Father. 
mighty, King of kings and Lord of lords, righteous God. Father, you will never leave us and never forsake us. You're always looking for us and we come close to you. You come close to us with your mighty presence. And today, in this moment, in this momentum, we come close to you, Abba. And we ask you, Father, heal me. Change me. Transform me, Lord. Till I be like you, my King. I want to see your glory. I want to touch you and feel you, my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer, Lord. And today, Father, you see my heart. You see my brokenness. You see my problems, Lord. You see my financial problems, Lord. You see my family situation, Lord. You see my visa situation. You see my own thing. Father, I come to you right now, Lord. You own me my hope. You own me my future. You own me my God, Lord. I'm really hungry for you, Lord. I want to, Father, forgive me. I was not on fire for a long time, Lord. But I'm now promised to be more on fire to serve you. To be more strong in you, Lord. To promise to read your word. To save the souls. To preach the gospel. To be the real representative of Jesus Christ. Because you are the Lord. Because Jesus is the Lord. He is everything. Everything belongs to you, my Father. You are our Savior. You are our King. And we give it to you right now. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege for me to be today, Lord, with the precious people of God, the warriors, the people who has not compromised, dedicate themselves and come to the house of the Lord and, de and dedicate the time, Lord, Bless every one of us today, Lord. And bless the servants of God. Bless the pastors, Lord, today. Father, they call and chosen by you, Lord. They carry this heavy task, Lord. Sometimes it's a heavy burden, Lord. And it's, it's pay the price, Lord. But Father, send the right people. Send the right servants. Send the more brothers and sisters. More families, Lord. Father, Lord. Everything what they invest be this be not disappear the church be blooming the church be prosper the church be blessed and the only church in Haifa Beersheba, Rishon, Natania Lord and in Tel Aviv and all the cities be blooming and united together in one spirit and it's become no rejection it is no gossiping and it's no jealousy these churches be the living testimony to all Filipino societies and to the embassy and to, from Israel to the nations in the name of Yeshua the Messiah Jesus Christ Amen, Amen.